now. Thank you very much. Uh, can we can we have the legal officer provide a statement? Yes, yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is a brief reminder of procedures and behaviours during the meeting. Could you please make sure that your mobile phones and other devices are switched to silent if they're in close proximity to you? Huh? Everyone is responsible for managing their own microphone by keeping it muted on less on muting when invited to speak. Take your phone away. This includes any roll call vote. Following the presentation and the members' discussion, members will be asked to vote on each item. The roll call vote is called alphabetically, so to make it as smooth as possible, please could members be poised in readiness to be called and unmute your microphone before you vote and then mute yourself again afterwards. You are only able to participate in the vote if you have been present at the meeting for the duration of the agenda item. That means by being able to hear and be heard by the chairman. If you should lose visual connection during the agenda item, you are still able to vote. Or if you lose audio connection during the meeting, however briefly for that agenda item, you should return a vote of abstain. There may be technical issues with connectivity that mean you leave the meeting unintentionally. Unfortunately, if this is the case, you will have to abstain on the item that you missed part of. To re-enter the meeting, use the Zoom invitation link. If a counselor has an interest and does not wish to attend part of the meeting, the hosting officer will put them in the waiting room and return them to the meeting when the item is finished. Some members of the public are making representations by video recording, which will be played at the relevant time, and members of the public or parish council representatives wishing to participate in the meeting will be held in the waiting room by the host until it's their turn to speak. Should the chairman wish to adjourn the meeting at any time, they will advise that the meeting is to be adjourned and state what time the meeting will be reconvened. All participants are asked to remain in the meeting with their microphones muted. The meeting is live streamed and you will be seen and heard by members of the public, so it's important to behave professionally at all times. There may be a few seconds delay between the end of the meeting and when the live stream and recording are stopped. Finally, please also note that any comments made, made using the chat function publicly can be read by anyone in the meeting, including public speakers. Um, if, if invited into, into the meeting if it's not in private mode. So please do not forget to set the function if you wish to engage in a private chat with an officer or member. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, can those members who are not muted please do so? Welcome to everybody for attending the meeting and um, thank you very much for attending this extra meeting, particularly as somebody's already said on such a lovely day. The um, Officers also must be thanked for, for putting it together. Could the officers please introduce themselves to the public? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name's Adrian Smith. I'm the major applications team leader. I'm here today substituting for Emma Parks, our head of development. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Tamara Dale, senior planning officer. I'm presenting two, three of the items uh, on the agenda today. Good afternoon, my name is Giles Holbrook. I am a planning officer in our minor applications team. I am here today presenting two items to committee. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Joy Ukadike and I'm from Legal Services. I'm Samantha Whitlock and I'm from Legal Services. I'm Liz Pauly from Democratic Services. I'm clerking the meeting today. Thank you very much. Now to go into the agenda and we'll start at um, item one, apologies for absence. Are there any apologies for absence? Yes, there are apologies from councillors Mike Morgan and um, James Wright. Thank you very much. And Councillor Clark, I thank him for being able to get here after his little domestic problem. Item two of the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, you have the minutes in front of you. May I sign them as a full and correct record? Read. Read. Thank, thank you very much. The approval to sign the minutes is a true and correct method, uh, record. And of course, the signature would take place at some later date when we can get together. Item three is declarations of interest. Do any members have declarations of interest? 
I can see no blue hands. So I presume that there are no declarations of interest. Thank you very much. Item four are announcements. I have no announcements. I don't believe the officers have any announcements. So there have been no announcements. We will then move on to, and you'll notice by the way, there are no appeal notices in the bundle uh, because of course the extra meeting, we sort of scooped up all the appeal notices at the last meeting. And of course we've got another meeting, exciting stuff. Uh, next week, I think it is. Yes. Right. May we now move on to item number five, um, which is Landing Gate Cottage Street, Thakum. Could the officers please present? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. So uh, this is an application that seeks full planning permission for the erection of two semi-detached dwellings to the south of Gate Cottage with associated parking and works. Uh, so here's the location plan. As you can see, the application site, as represented by the red, red outline, is located to the south of Gate Cottage and the west of the street. The site forms a grass piece of land which incorporates a steep tree-lined bank. Residential properties are located to the north and northeast, and these follow the linear line of the street and typically comprise two-storey properties. The application site is located within the built-up area boundary of Thacombe, as shown by the dashed blue line, and lies within the designated conservation area, as shown by the dashed yellow line. A number of Grade 2 listed buildings are located in proximity to the site, as shown by the stars. And to the south and west of the site, the area becomes more rural in nature, with a series of public rights of way transecting the, the area, as shown by the dashed green line. The two dwellings would be oriented to the to face east, and the proposal would include earthworks to change the existing topography of the site to accommodate the development. The proposed dwellings would provide private amenity space to the west and two tandem parking spaces to each side of the dwelling. The proposed dwellings would have a simple cottage design with pitched roofs and pitched roof gable features to the front elevations. And the first floor of each dwelling would be built approximately in line with the elevated fields to the west of the site as shown by the rear elevation. The proposed dwellings would be set into the bank with the first floor of each dwelling approximately built in line with the level of the fields to the west. A set of steps would provide access to the front of each property with a low brick wall and railings along the site frontage. The height of this feature was reduced during the consideration of the application. So these photographs show uh, the area for development and includes the steep bank extending above the public highway. Uh, these photos, photos show the site in the context of the neighbouring properties. These dwellings are located in close proximity to the street, with the timber frame dwelling to the bottom, including similar steps and landscaping as proposed. The bottom photo also shows the three trees to be retained as part of the develop development, as indicated by the arrow arrows. Uh, so the application site is located within the built-up area boundary, in close proximity to residential development, and is considered to be within a sustainable location capable of accommodating a level of residential infill. The proposed dwellings would be appropriately positioned close to other similar residential development, mimicking the ribbon form and historic evolution of development along the street. The pair of dwellings would be modestly proportioned and are, and are of an appropriate design and vernacular that would respect the character and appearance of the conservation area, with trees of visual importance retained and further landscaping secured by condition. This would soften the development when viewed from the more rural aspects to the south and west. The proposal would have no adverse impact on the wider landscape, ecology, neighbouring amenity or highway safety, and the proposed development is therefore recommended for approval subject to the conditions as outlined in section 7 of the accompanying committee report. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have two speakers and we'll start with uh, Matt Smith from DNM Planning who is the agent and this is a Zoom representation. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Matt Smith from DNM Planning. I'm the planning agent for the proposal before you. You should have received transcript of this item me speaking today, which was circulated just in case of any internet problems or interruptions. I'd like the officers and the expert consultees for their assistance in the process from pre-application to committee today. This application has been supported by the council's professional planning officers and expert consultants recognising its sustainability credentials. The site is within the built-up area of Arnicum, wherein the local plan seeks to direct new development. The development would provide much needed housing to the area and the wider district. Each joint is furnished with a good-sized garden and sufficient parking. 
The design of the units has been evolved to properties in the area. The officer's report has not identified any harm and considers the scheme to be wholly policy compliant. You will note this application to the parish council. The parish council's primary objection is based on the scheme's impact on the conservation area. Undoubtedly, though, you would have noted at paragraph 3.4 to 3.7 and 6.4 to 6.15, on the advice of the council's own qualified expert consultants, no harm has been identified to the conservation area or listed buildings. Within the context of the national planning policy framework, the prime heritage policies is that there is no requirement to engage in the balancing act of public benefits versus harm, since there is no identified harm. Throughout the process, the applicant has worked proactively with the council's expert officer, including a pre-application to ensure that the scheme would not result in any harm. The design has been met with only a very limited number of comments. This is despite it being highly advertised, including from Crash Council. Given the limited concerns raised by members of the public, and importantly that the council's expert consultants and planning officers have agreed that the scheme is wholly policy compliant, we trust that you will support their recommendation and planning permission. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we now have a speaker from Thaken Parish Council, Owen Richards, by video. Good afternoon, colleagues. Despite some reworking of initial plans for this proposal, the Parish Council's view is that the scheme remains subject to a serious concern that development at this site will extend the built-up area against the conservation area boundary in a way that will materially impact on views out of and into the conservation area. Our view is that this is in conflict with both the general national planning framework duty that special attention shall be paid to the desirability of preserving and enhancing the character or appearance of conservation areas. And more specifically, the Thakem Neighbourhood Plan Policy 7, Heritage Assets, which sets out an expectation that proposals must clearly demonstrate that any harm to the historic significance of the conservation area and its setting will be less than substantial and that any such harm is outweighed by the provision of a clear and sustained community benefit. The site in question was specifically assessed and excluded in the site assessment process for our neighbourhood plan due to the concerns that are now being raised. The proposed scheme will materially impact on the conservation area, particularly with regard to the view outwards and southwards from the junction of the street and Craze Lane, as well as from the bridleway running directly past the site. These views currently contain no buildings as the new cottages are set back east of the service road and are well screened. The following montage, although crude, illustrates the impact of this scheme on the view from the north. As the montage shows, the new dwellings will have a major and negative impact on this view. We would also point out that the street view illustrations submitted in this case have signally avoided visualising this view so our crude montage is the only attempt that has been made to visualise the actual impact from, on the view from the conservation area. We question how the planning officer and the landscape and heritage teams have felt able to come to the conclusion that no material harm will arise from this scheme and that any conflict with the neighbourhood plan either does not exist or can be set aside without having any visualisation of the key view after the introduction of the new houses. We believe it's clear that the visual impact of this proposal will cause substantial harm to this key view. Take a neighbourhood plan policy seven requires that any such harm is outweighed by the provision of a clear and sustained community benefit. We submit that adding two open market houses does not provide any such counterbalancing community benefit. Therefore, the Parish Council feels strongly that the recommendation in this case gives insufficient weight to a clear conflict with a specifically applicable policy in its neighbourhood plan. And given the rejection of this site in the process of developing that plan, allowing this scheme 
would amount to directly overriding that local planning process. Therefore, unless some additional clear and sustained community benefit can be attached to this scheme, we ask committee members to refuse it. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. The conservation report that the speaker was referring to is on page 15, para 3.4. Uh, would officers care to speak at this stage? in response to what the remarks were? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I think it's just important to note that the Conservation Officer, uh, uh, paragraph 3.6 of the report, indicates that the proposal would not result in harm, although it would be perceptible uh, from within the conservation area, it is deemed that that does not result in harm. Um, it's also important to note that the site is located within the built-up area boundary of Thacom, um, so it it is acceptable in principle. There is a uh, presumption in favour of sustainable development, and I think I think that's most of the comments there. Thank you very much. We'll now go to the ward members. Uh, Councillor Blackhall. Well, I'm, I'm, am I muted now, Chairman? No, I can hear you. You can. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, my view on this application is that although I respect what the parish council have said, um, I am surprised that there was only two objections locally. Normally, when we get anything in Thaker in this area, there is a deluge of uh, local objections. So on balance, I would be tending to agree with the officers that you know, get in another couple of properties on, along the line said, as long as they can, I can think that the thing we ought to make sure that there is well built into that, that the protection of the trees in that area, so that, uh, uh, you know, we do know with developers that sometimes they have uh, happy accidents from their point of view with the bulldozer or something like that when they come to this. So I think that we ought to try to make sure that the tree preservation part of this is very, very watertight. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. I'll now go to Cabinet Member Councillor Circus, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. I have considerable doubts about this application and considerable doubts about the officer's recommendation. I, I think Owen Richards did... Uh, uh, I'm very glad that he touched on the point that uh, members can't, from what they've been shown in the way of photographs, get an accurate picture of this site and the effect of this development on that site. One of the things I regret about Horsham District Council is that unlike my previous authority, uh, nobody seems to believe in site visits. Well, the advantage of site visits is members can actually see firsthand what the site looks like and really appreciate uh, uh, the position of the development uh, within the landscape. Now, the answer, in, in a world where we don't seem to have site visits for some reason, um, the answer is to have photographs. <clears throat> but those photographs are no good if they don't give an accurate picture to members of what the site looks like. And the photographs in this case do not do so. In fact, I'm generally worried about photographs at, at, on these planning applications. <clears throat> the leader and I were very concerned at an application in the last uh, planning committee south and we had to specifically ask for some photo particular photographs to be shown because otherwise members would not have had a, an accurate picture of that particular development. Um, this is in fact a very historic centre. You wouldn't think so from the photographs but it is uh, and if the photographs had been taken in a different way you would have uh, one would have appreciated that the report seems to suggest that this is a 16th century uh, development, a 16th century um, community in terms of origin. It isn't. It, it in fact, uh, was mentioned in Doomsday, so it's much older. It is, in fact, the most sensitive spot in Thacombe. And uh, th this was appreciated, certainly in the first uh, round of consultation, the, cons the conservation officer said that the proposed houses will be conspicuous in views to the south. The parish, in my view, quite rightly has, has 
hit on the impact uh, on views of the conservation area. <clears throat> this site was considered as part of the work that was done by Thakum Parish Council on their neighborhood plan. And as uh, Owen Richards rightly says, it was specifically excluded. Um, I have to say that um, I, uh, there was one comment, uh, one person who wrote in in support said, oh, it would provide housing for farm workers. And yet there's no suggestion that there should be a condition attached to these properties limiting occupation to farm workers. That would have made a little bit more sense. In fact, they are open market houses and I doubt if farm workers would ever be able to afford them. Uh, so that it seems to me to be uh, an observation and suggestion in support of the application that has absolutely no merit at all. Um, you know, it is suggested, oh, well, it will provide some extra housing. Thakum does not need to be told about the need for extra housing. Proportionately, Thakum has taken more housing, more extra housing in recent times than even the town of Horsham. And I think that needs to be put on the table. Uh, and therefore, that's an added reason, in my view, why we should respect the neighborhood plan, which, as I said, has specifically excluded this site. Um, I have, uh, I have lost tr track of how many times at planning committees I have said how important it is to support parish councils and the work that they've done on neighborhood plans. Parish councils give up a lot of time and effort to produce these plans. They feel their work is underappreciated. They feel the plans they produce, and perhaps today is, an, is another example of that, that the plans they produce, the decisions they make, which is the whole logic of having a neighborhood plan, is not respected and not appreciated. And here we have another Another example of trying to override the decisions which under a regime of localism, the parish council has made for its neighborhood plan. Um, I agree with the initial view of the conservation officer and with the view of the parish council. I think this will do violence to a most historic spot in the center of uh, it's, the, it's the core of the original settlement in Thakum. I think it will do violence to uh, the scale of the place, to the appreciation of the several listed buildings in the immediate vicinity, and it will totally undermine the decisions that the parish council has made in a spirit of localism in the neighbourhood plan. And I think, therefore, Chairman, the right response to this application is to refuse it this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, for the benefit of the public, I'd just like to remind the meeting that members do make site visits on their own account and that the officers are always so available to do site visits with members should they so wish them. And it does take place on occasion as, and as deemed necessary by the local ward members. Right, the last ward member is Councillor Saeed. You're, you're muted, Councillor Saeed. Right, thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> um, I'm in sympathy with the Sacum District um, Councillor. You know, um, Sacum, West Chiltington, th these places to me are special. And to build all over these places whenever and when, whenever they like, I don't think it's fair. I strongly agree with Philip Circus, uh, Councillor Circus, uh, what he mentioned. And um, I think I'm going to vote against this, um, this plan, this, this, this um, application. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll now go to uh, members of the committee and we'll start with Councillor van der Kloch. Um, 
Thank you, Chairman. Um, well, I, I just wanted to say that I very much agree with what Councillor Circus has said. Um, in particular, that I, I agree with what he says about um, the usefulness of photographs, particularly at the moment when site visits are difficult because we are meant to be locked down and not going out and about. Um, at the South Downs, where I also sit on the planning committee, uh, we always do site visits, but at the moment we, we are getting very good photographs um, of the site. And so um, the, the, the only really useful photograph that I've seen is the one that was presented by the planning committee, uh, by the, uh, sorry, the, by the parish council. Um, I, I found what the um, parish council, uh, the parish councillor Owen Richards had to say very persuasive. Um, I found that the uh, photograph of the view looking out south um, of down the lane um, very much affected by the obtrusive building which would appear there, which would affect the view out of the conservation area and into the conservation area. Um, if you look at the report that we have, the planning report at 3.6, the conservation officer says that um, the impact of the proposed houses on the character of the conservation area and setting of the listed building, it will be perceptible, but it will not result in harm. Now that's very much a, a matter of, of opinion. Um, I know the conservation officer is, is, is something of an expert and I respect their opinion, but I think it's also open to us to form our own opinion. And I think there will be harm. Um, and I don't think that is outweighed by the benefit to the community as, the, um, as Mr. Richards argued. And so um, I will also be, be um, inclined, depending on what other councillors have to say, to vote against this application. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Cabinet Member for Planning, Councillor Claire Vickers. Sorry, Chairman, could um, the planning officers comment on what has been said first before yes. I speak? Yes, Ad Adrian Smith. Uh, hello, yes, a number of items have been picked up here. I'm aware my colleague is bringing up some further photographs in due course which might assist in your decision making. Um, in terms of the site not being allocated within the Thaken neighbourhood plan, as my colleague said, this site is within the built up area boundary. Ergo under policy three of the HDPF, the principle of development is considered acceptable. The issue to hand is therefore the impact on the setting of heritage assets. Um, and I'll come to that in, in just a moment. Another point that's raised which about Thakem having taken proportionately more housing than Horsham as a reason not to grant permission here. I'm afraid that's not something that's supported within our policy framework. As I said, policy three does allow development within settlement boundaries and they are, policy framework also sets a minimum quantum of housing. So that shouldn't, in my view, have any bearing on your decision. Returning to heritage, um, I've heard various comments that um, substantial harm would arise from this development. So I must remind members that substantial harm is a very high bar in the national planning policy framework. It's almost equivalent to total loss of um, a heritage asset. Here we're talking about uh, a pair of houses within the conservation area and within the setting of a listed building or several listed buildings, should I say. So the test here is um, if members consider there to be harm, then it's most likely to be less than substantial harm and the test there is to weigh that against the public benefit. Um, and as Councillor Van der Kloot has said, that's a matter for the decision maker yeah, to make. The recommendation of officers, which is set out in the, in the comments from our heritage experts, and again at paragraph 6.14, is that whilst there's impact, that impact does not equate to harm. And that's the recommendation before you. Um, I'll just sort of pass to Tamara to bring up some photographs and talk you through them. Yes, thank you. Uh, let me just share my screen. Um, so I guess firstly, I would just hang on, that's not. Uh, just like to take you back to the site plan. Um, so as you can see from the site plan, it would be read, the proposed development would be read in the context of, of these two dwellings here. Uh, you know, they are in relatively close relation. So going back to the, the photos that were presented during the presentation, um, 
taking from here, you will see that this house, uh, which is immediately opposite the proposed site, would be read in the context of the new development, as will uh, Gate Cottage, which is the host dwelling, which is further to the south. Um, just going through, there's, there are a couple of other photographs that uh, I didn't include in the presentation, but are worthwhile showing now. Uh, so the top photograph here is, is taken in, in, close, in quite close proximity to Gate Cottage, again, looking towards the proposed development, which would be probably located around about here. So again, you would be reading this new scheme against existing built form uh, within the conservation area and, and within the sort of wider locality. So I think it's just important to note that there is existing built form immediately adjacent to the site and you would read that in the context of the proposed scheme. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll call uh, Councillor Brown now and Councillor Vickers after Councillor Brown. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chair. Um, Quick question for the uh, the officers, if I may, um, because I I agree with Councillor Circus regarding site visits, um, and I'm actually looking on Google Maps at the moment and trying to get a a, a walk down the street with Street View. Um, can you confirm that that uh, the location um, of the photographs that you just showed me with Gate Cottage on? What's the name of the, the road there? If officers could clarify. Um, so that's the street is uh, the street. The yes. Yes. Thought so. Okay. Good. Thank you. Because I'm I'm looking on at the right place then. So I've 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 uh, I've used Google Maps to walk up and down uh, the street and Cray's Lane and adjacent roads. Um, so my my first question is, how many developments have there been along that stretch of the street within the last hundred years? Do we need? <laughs> Not really important. Well, quite to the contrary, Councillor Saheed, what we're talking about is, is the harm done to these uh, existing dwellings. What's been built there in the last hundred years? Anything? I can see that there's a, a new development, is there not? If you go down the street on the left-hand side, is there anything there? Am I looking at the right place? It looks like some new houses been built there on the left-hand side. We're just trying to work that out for you, Councillor, so please bear with us. Would you like to bring up your next question while we're waiting, Councillor so Brown? Yeah, so while, while we're waiting for that, I think that it should, should the officers confirm that nothing's been built within the last 100 years or so and that there is no new development on the street, um, I think that the, the our argument that it would that it would do harm to existing um, listed buildings has got some, some merit. If we find um, that there are other recent developments, maybe in the last 20 years or so along that stretch, um, and that we've allowed it previously, I think that that might be possibly a difficult argument to have. And I'd like the officer's opinion on the uh, on how sound that would be if we turn this down based on on the, the on the harm it would do to existing listed properties, whether we, they think that that would hold water or not. Mm. If I can respond to those, um, I understand Tamar was trying to sort of find some plans, but looking at aerial photographs, there's no brand new development that we can see in the immediate vicinity of the site, but that shouldn't necessarily guide as to whether developments moving forward should be refused in principle. Uh, the National Planning Policy Framework does say that development can take place in heritage settings, as long mm -hmm. as it preserves the setting, or if it causes harm that the public benefits outweigh that harm. So I would suggest that the weight to be attached to historic development here is very limited at best. Thank you. Thank you. I'll now call on Councillor Crocker, followed by Councillor uh, Vickers, and that will be the end of the discussion from the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> in connection with views um, from that corner of the road at Bend, um, the officer's photo seems to show a, a relatively thin uh, tree line on the south side, um, whereas some of the earlier photos I've been looking at seem to show a fairly dense uh, tree line on the right-hand side past the, uh, the gate cottage. Has there been some thinning, shall we say, and site clearance carried out already along there? It's 
not something that I'm aware of, um, councillor. I'm just going to check the planning history of the site very quickly. I'll be responding. So our mapping system shows that there's been no application for the felling of trees, which require consent because they're in a conservation area. Um, however, thinning might well have taken place by the landowner in the past. What I would sort of um, mention in terms of previous comments made about loss of trees ahead of development, unfortunately any condition that we apply to a planning consent can only bite once the development commences. So unfortunately there is a window where landowners can uh, remove trees. However, in this case, as I said, it's in the conservation area. So there are special protections that mean consent for removal of trees is required from the authority. Thank you. Councillor Vickers. Uh, thank you, Chairman, and I thank uh, Adrian Smith for clarifying the policies that we need to comply with in this application. Um, <laughs> so, uh, landscape impact is, of course, subjective, but we have landscape officers who are the experts who um, look at this based on certain criteria. And whilst there is no doubt that there is some landscape impact, I think um, Adrian Smith made it very clear that this impact has to be substantial harm and it's difficult to justify how this could be substantial. Um, I understand the concerns expressed by the parish council about it not being in their neighbourhood plan. We have this discussion lots of times at lots of planning committee meetings, but uh, just to remind everybody that just because it's not in the neighbourhood plan doesn't automatically mean it's not acceptable. I do share the concerns that have been expressed but quite frankly, I can't find any substantial reason to refuse the application on the basis that the only concerns that I've heard expressed are landscape impacts and um, justifying it as substantial is going to be very difficult. Um, I just wonder whether uh, officers would like to comment on the um, um, comments that were received by Thaken Parish Council on page 18, where they say, should approval be considered, then conditions to mitigate against the concerns raised should be included, i.e. additional planted screening around the house. Is that something that could be added as a condition? Um, I, I recognise the, uh, the view from the conservation area as shown by the Parish Council, um, and I presume that any lighting would need to have permission. External lighting could be controlled by condition. So if the officer could just clarify those points, please. We'll go to Officer Adrian Smith and then we'll go to the vote thereafter. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to just, um, I believe it might have been a slip of the tongue from Councillor Vickers there about substantial harm. We're not saying there's substantial harm here. I believe we meant to refer to less than substantial harm on the heritage asset, the important distinction. I can see you nodding your head there. I'll pass to uh, the case officer in respect to the conditions. Uh, yes, thank you. So in regard to the additional landscaping, we have recommended a condition, which is condition seven on page 28 of uh, the agenda, which refers to uh, a hard and soft landscaping scheme. So uh, coming forward, we, we would anticipate uh, a kind of coverage in terms of the frontage there with additional planting. Thank you very much. We'll now go to Democratic and light, Services. A lighting condition, is that something that can be protected in that area? Uh, yes, if, if members felt that that was necessary, we could add that. I would suggest that, Chairman, if that's uh, OK with everybody. Yes, I don't think anyone will object to that. Not, not in the it's an agreement. Right, if the officers are finished, uh, can we now go to Democratic Services for the vote? If the members can ensure that they're they're unmuted in order to say their bit. Right, okay, so this is um, for to grant commission, um, permission as printed in the report with one additional condition um, controlling outside lighting. Um, Councillor Blackall. For. Councillor Brown. Against. Councillor Chowan. For. Councillor Circus. Against. Councillor Clark. Four. Councillor Croker. Four. Councillor Dorr. Four. Councillor Donnelly. Four. Councillor Jupp. Sorry, four. 
Thank you. Um, Councillor Kitchen. Four. Councillor Lambert. Four. Councillor Lloyd. Four. Councillor Noel. Four. Councillor Platt. Four. Councillor Potts. Against. Councillor Rowbottom. Four. Councillor Saheed. <coughs> Councillor Saheed. <coughs> Councillor Saheed there? Y yes, um, against. Thank you. Councillor Sanson. Four. Councillor Vanderclute. Against. Councillor Vickers. Four. Right, so that's 15 for and five against, but the motion is carried. Thank you very much. We'll now go on to agenda item, agenda item six. Um, and I think you've already brought Mr. Les Humphrey into the meeting, have you? Yes, he's in the meeting now. So I presume he can hear okay. Right, item six is to a demolition of existing structure and construction, a new one bedroom with auxiliary vehicle parking, land adjacent St. Anne's Hyde Street, Upper Bedian, and the recommendation is to approve. Would the officers care to lead? Good afternoon, thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Yep. Excellent. Uh, so this item um, concerns application reference DC 22184. Um, this is land adjacent to St Anne's um, in Upper Beading and seeks consent for the provision of a single one bedroom dwelling in replacement of an existing garage facility. Uh, the site location is within the built up area of Upper Beading towards its southernmost extent towards the on the eastern side of Hyde Street, as indicated on the annotated plan on this slide. Um, the site is in proximity to the South Downs National Park, which is to the site and east to the south and east of the application site, with the conservation area of Hyde Street um, of the Hyde Street conservation area located towards the northwest. It is my understanding that the site comprises of the former garden space of number five Mains, Ride, Mains Road and is beyond any statutory environmental heritage or archaeological constraint. The existing site hosts a two-storey flat-roofed garage building, um, which in my opinion is, is of a limited aesthetic merit, further benefiting from an existing access onto Hyde Street, together with a parking and turning area forward of the existing garage. A, substa a substation is found to the adjacent north of the site, which is indicated on the bottom right-hand photo on this side, with the plans for the existing garage building indicated included above. The site is visible both in the northern and southern approaches to Upper Beading with it from Hyde Street, on, as shown in the top left hand photo, that is a southerly perspective from Hyde Street showing the adjacent dwelling of St Anne's to the north of the site, and the right hand, the right hand most photo is a southerly perspective in, on the approach to Upper Beading, which shows the application site on the right hand side as currently enclosed by temporary fencing. As within the site, there is a, a embankment at its southern extent, which has been affected by a recent cutting um, with, a, with, with a temporary fence fronting uh, its length against Hyde Street. The, proposed, the proposal seeks to provide a single one bedroom shadow bungalow style dwelling, which would be positioned centrally within the site. The dwelling is sited in a comparable position in relation to Hyde Street relative to the adjacent dwelling of St Anne's to the north with two off street parking spaces to its front and a gar courtyard and top level garden forming the amenity spaces of the proposed dwelling to its rear. Um, the dwelling is slightly positioned forward of the existing dwelling, occupying is partly occupying its existing footprint, uh, with the ridge of the proposed dwelling orientated broadly on a south to west access across the site. Sorry, on a east to west access across the site. The proposed dwelling is a modest single bedroom unit um, comprising of a half hip roof form, um, which is well, which, which is of a deemed to be of a, a proportionate. 
uh, scale relative to the site and a design which would relate sympathetically to its surroundings. Uh, the proposal would be considered to represent an improvement upon the visual amenities of the existing site, especially with regards to the quality and current appearance of the existing building. In terms of the land, landscaping of the site, the site does ocu occupy a, an awkward topography with a relatively significant change in levels between the uh, between the frontage against Hyde Street and at its westernmost easternmost extent, which is contained, which, which would comprise of an upper level garden for future occupiers. You can see in the site section on the bottom left hand corner that this is accessed by means of an external staircase which is already in situ um, and runs to the rear and side of the existing garage building which is to be removed. Uh, this, the, the proposal would seek to regrade the existing top level garden which is shown in the top right hand sorry top left hand most photo which is relatively undulating in its current composition with a reduction of between 50 to 50 centimeters to one meter lowering the relative ground level um, in relation to the common boundary with St Anne's, which is shown uh, by that fence and trellising uh, within the photograph at the top left hand side. The proposal would be to introduce a 1.7 metre fence uh, to the rear of on, well, within the application site adjacent to that existing boundary treatment, which would afford uh, the neighbouring occupiers and future occupiers uh, with privacy. Um, whilst this fence would not be stepped as is the current arrangement of the neighbouring boundary treatment. It is considered that on balance, uh, the level of natural light to be enjoyed by the neighbouring occupiers would not amount to acceptable harm, whilst the proposed arrangement is considered acceptable, providing for the privacy of both future and adjacent occupiers. The re this relationship is shown in closer detail on this set of photographs, with the St Anne's positioned at a distance of between six to seven metres from the boundary, and with the existing garage building, particularly on the right-hand side most photo, already providing for uh, a degree of loss of light to those neighbouring occupiers. By virtue of the, the repositioning of the, of the dwelling or built form within the site through the replacement of that structure, it is considered that the, the receipt of additional natural light through that position or through that perspective um, would, would offset any loss of light arising from the introduction of a new boundary treatment um, in this location. Overall, it is considered that the proposal would make use effective use of previously developed land in a sustainable location within a defined built-up area. The proposed dwelling is considered of an acceptable standard of design and would improve upon the visual amenities of the existing building and site. It is considered that the proposal would afford an acceptable level of amenity to future occupiers and adjacent occupiers with no unacceptable effect upon the living conditions of neighbouring occupiers or users of land. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Officer Holbrook. We'll now go to the public speakers and we'll start with Anna Denny, who mm. is objecting via video. Hello, I'm speaking to you from the boundary site to allow you a sense of the existing elevations and topography. Historically, the area behind was used as a path to the workshop, roughly following the same contour as our land without issue. The applicant seeks to level out the area in line with the existing still height of the workshop. This in fact increases the existing original land level here by 0.6 metres. To then overcome overlooking and loss of privacy issues caused, they propose to install closed board fencing up to a permitted height of 2 metres, resulting in a solid 3.5 metre high barrier from the perspective of St Anne's. Consequently, this will significantly affect overshadowing, loss of light and reinforce an enhanced sense of enclosure, contrary to policy 33 of Horsham District Planning Framework. Whilst the report suggests that removal of the workshop will afford us additional light, this building only spans 1.8 metres of our boundary, whereas the fencing spans 8 metres at a far closer proximity to our adjacent internal living area. The proposal manifests as convenient to the applicant and does not go far enough towards protecting the immunity of St Anne's. Revised plans could keep the proposed garden level at 0.6 metres below the existing sill height. A screening solution could then be kept at a more acceptable um, finished height, thus minimising the detrimental harm imposed on St Anne's immunity. The existing fencing is installed within our boundary. It has been solely owned and maintained by us for over 40 years without dispute. Copies of Associated Covenant and Land Registry have been submitted. 
Lastly, we are concerned as to how any regulatory condition would mm. be enforced and how it would future maintain the protection of St Anne's amenity, specifically in terms of um, uh, any future occupier erecting a garden building or like at this elevated border. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now call on the agent, Les Humphrey, who is speaking by Zoom for two minutes. Afternoon, Chairman. Um, the details of this application have been carefully redesigned to overcome the previous reasons for refusal. The Parish Council considered that the proposal would be detrimental to the street scene by being forward of the existing garage with workshop over. However, the scheme is now submitted, given the reduced scale of the building, will not be in front of the adjoining property, so will not have an adverse effect on the street scene. In fact, to the contrary, with the removal of the existing flat roof two-storey building, a replacement with a sympathetically designed chalet bungalow will not only enhance the street scene, but also provide better outlook and separation to the adjoining property of St Anne's. The existing access is to be retained, which has provided a usable gradient driveway serving the existing garage workshop and therefore must be deemed acceptable to the proposal. The neighbours of St Anne's raised objection and concerns over their privacy, particularly with the raised rear garden section. Details have been agreed to reduce levels of the garden section and erect a new independent 1.7 metre high fence between the two properties. Objections over highway safety have been duly considered by the West Sussex County Council Highways Department and raise no objection to the scheme and do not require the footpath extended beyond the existing utilised access into this proposal. Adequate parking space for two vehicles, including turning facilities within the curtilage of the site, are to be provided. Therefore, I respectfully ask the committee to uphold the officer's recommendations of this application, confirm approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Humphrey. We'll now go to Councillor Bob Harbour of Upper Beedon Paris Council, who will be objecting to this application and who will be speaking for five minutes via Zoom. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this site has been subject to a number of applications in the past, as highlighted in the officer's report. Other beating parish council object to this application on several grounds, including overdevelopment, design, parking and accessibility. First, overdevelopment. Each previous application has been refused due to overdevelopment. Whilst this proposal is more modest in size, the site is small and cramped. The parish council feel the site is too small for a residential property with amenity for its residents. The slope of the site reduces accessibility and amenity use. Other reading parish council recognise that several design features have been addressed in the current application. However, the proposed property remains imposing on a small site with very little amenity for the residents. In addition, the proposed materials are not in keeping with neighbouring properties, which will adversely affect the street scene. Objections for overdevelopment and design are supported by the following policies. Policy 32 of the Horsham District Planning Framework requires the development to contribute to a sense of place in both the buildings and spaces themselves and the way they integrate with their surroundings. <coughs> Policy 8 of the submission of the of the reading neighbourhood plan provides that the scale, density, massing, height, landscape design, layout and materials of all proposed development will be required to reflect the design and characteristics of surrounding buildings. The proposed development does not meet these criteria. Neighbouring properties are predominantly brick, whereas this proposal is timber clad and rendered, which is also detrimental to the visual aspect as addressed in policy eight and will not fit within the neighbouring area. Furthermore, policy eight requires a contribution to a sense of place in the buildings and spaces between them. This is not achieved within this proposal. Parking on the proposed site is limited and only accommodated by taking part of the hard standing of the adjacent UK power network substation. 
It is not known whether UK power networks have agreed to this. Once two cars on the, are on the drive, there is insufficient space to turn a vehicle and enter the highway, a narrow highway, on a bend forward facing. Policy 41, parking provides that adequate parking facilities must be provided. Street parking is limited, would not be possible outside the property, particularly as there is no footpath, just a steep bank, and pedestrians are forced to work, walk in the road already. Accessibility. There is no footpath from outside St Anne's next door to the Henfield Road. The busy road, walkers and local residents are forced to use the narrow roadway to gain access to the South Downs and Henfield Road, which will include access to the new Stenning Grammar School site and Valerie Manor Nursing Home Extension. Upper Beading Parish Council are working on a community-led highway scheme to facilitate a new footway. This is supported by the neighbourhood plan, by a spatial strategy to include accessibility for pedestrians, cyclists and safer routes to school. This therefore highlights that current access by foot is not sufficient. Policy 4, <coughs> 40 of the Horsham Development Planning Framework, a development will be supported if it provides safe and suitable access for all vehicles, pedestrians, cyclists, horses and riders. There are all of these in that area and the lack of footpath is contrary to this policy and therefore should not be supported. Policy four states the development to be contained within an existing defensible boundary. According to the Portion Development Framework, a defensible bank boundary might be a stream road or a hedgerow. This temporary fence encroaches on the highway's boundary and will make a footpath impossible. Finally, policy 33 of the Horsham Development Planning Framework, development shall be required to ensure that it is designed to avoid unacceptable harm through overlooking or noise. Several public presentation, representations have been expressed and these should be considered. Considering all the factors highlighted, of a meeting parish council urges this committee to refuse this application. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Can uh, do officers wish to comment at this stage? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, a number of points raised uh, within those representations, and I would like to respond to some of those, if that's at all possible. Um, yes. First, I would like to clarify that the, the applicant has provided the authority with land registry documentation and confirmation of their ownership uh, of land, uh, which concerns the full extent of the application site. Um, as such, notwithstanding that some of the land forms the access to the adjacent substation, I am satisfied that that land falls within the applicant's possession. Um, furthermore, UK power networks have been consulted in connection with this application and in connection with preceding applications, though have not offered any comments um, in respect of the proposal. Um, furthermore, the applicant has provided plans which confirm that the boundary treatment to be introduced to the boundary is indeed within the application site and would not involve the removal and or replacement of the existing boundary fence, which is understood to be maintained by the adjacent occupiers. In terms of the introduction of a footpath along the frontage of Hyde Street, I would emphasise to members they do have to consider the application on its respective merits and on the basis by which it has been put forward to the authority. Um, I acknowledge that it may well be deemed preferable for a footpath to afford access to the south and towards Henfield Road. However, that is not proposed as part of the application. And I would further emphasize that to do it to achieve such a footpath may not necessarily uh, be a straightforward process. This involves an undulating parcel of highways verge, which is vegetated at present. There would be a consideration as to the visual impact of such a feature, in addition to the effects of such developments on arboriculture and ecology. Um, as such, the, the emission of that element from well, from from this proposal before us, in my view, does not weigh against the proposal. 
In terms of the positioning of fencing currently fronting Hyde Street, the applicant has confirmed that this is temporary fencing and would be removed if permission were to be granted. This is confirmed on the plans which have been provided to the authority. Furthermore, in, a con in accordance with the local highways authority response that we received, it would appear that this, this, this element is positioned outside of the designated highway verge, which is owned in any instance by the applicant in this instance. In terms of the design of the dwelling, um, I would remind members that it is a modest single story shadow bungalow design. It is a pitched roof vernacular, which is far more sympathetic than the existing building on the site and accounting for the inclusion of a pitched roof represents a net reduction in bulk and massing. It is my opinion that this would sit sympathetically against the adjacent vernacular of detached bungalows um, with condition three requiring the submission and approval of a schedule of material materials prior to the commencement of relevant works. As such, while I do note the comments of the Parish Council with regard to the use of materials, Condition 3 affords a sufficient flexibility to secure the use of alternative details where, where the use of brickwork or indeed any other form of material preferred. In terms of the site constituting overdevelopment, I would advise members that we have received a number of applications on the site and that this site and the current proposal does represent a substantial reduction in both footprint and height um, and together with bulk and massing relative to the previous proposals. Um, it is my opinion that this design is successful, is successful, it is proportionate within the site and the level of amenity space which would be afforded would be more than proportionate to the one bedroom dwelling which is proposed. Um, I think on those grounds, I do consider the, 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 uh, the proposal to be successful in terms of its effects on character and appearance. Um, with regard to the effects on neighbouring occupiers, I acknowledged the, the neighbours' concerns um, in respect of the provision of a, of a um, of a potential outbuilding within that top level garden. Um, that is regulated by means of a condition uh, which does restrict and the implementation of rights bestowed under Class E of Part 1 of Schedule 2 of the General Permitted Development Order, which concerns domestic outbuildings and structures. The provision of a 1.7 metre fence to on the applicant's side of the boundary will result in some loss of privacy that is not disputed within the report. Sorry, will loss and result in some loss of light. However, I would advise members that there is some degree of separation between uh, the boundary and indeed St. Allen's itself. I consider that the degree of light which would be lost within the main living spaces of the dwelling would not prove significant, while the remaining garden spaces of St. Anne's, which extend to the north, uh, will continue to enjoy and fettered access to natural light. Furthermore, I do accept that there has to be a balance, balance between the privacy of future occupiers and adjacent occupiers and the policy 33 of the HDPF encourages the efficient use of land, especially where concerning previously developed land, as in this instance. I furthermore would remind members that the site continues to benefit from rights bestowed under Class A of Part 2 of the General Permitted Development Order, and indeed that a fence up to 2.2 two metres in height can be provided without the necessity for planning permission. In that regard, therefore, the provision of a 1.7 metre fence is actually lower than can be currently provided without the need for planning consent. I think in, as reasoned in detail within my report, I do consider that on balance that the proposal would not result in unacceptable harm to the amenities of adjacent occupiers. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. We'll now go to the ward members. Councillor Crocker, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, having lived just around the corner in Mains Farm Road when I first moved to Sussex, I do know this corner of Upper Beeding fairly well. Whilst I applaud the proposed removal of the unattractive two-storey garage with workspace over, I would note that prior to the, ap the applicant clearing several trees and shrubbery in the southern corner of the site, uh, this building would have been mostly hidden from view when approaching from the south. With their removal and clearance of the site, we are left with a fairly steep driveway leading to the aforesaid garage. Like so many of the surrounding properties, the proposed new dwelling will be noticeably elevated above the highway level. As far as I can tell, the applicant has not provided a contoured map indicating the proposed slab height of the new building. And I commend the planning officer for picking this up in his proposed pre-commencement condition four. However, 
we've been asked to decide this afternoon on the application before us. And I would suggest that we consider the most likely approach of continuing the same, sorry, the same slab height as the existing garage, as there is no indication to the contrary in the landscape plan. On this basis, we are looking at a building with a ridge height 0.7 metres or two foot and old money higher than the existing garage, but set with its full face just six metres from the highway boundary instead of 10 metres to the corner of the garage. I do note that the officer comments that the principal elevation of a proposed dwelling would be set back from Hyde Street by a comparable distance to the adjacent dwelling of St Anne's, to which I would comment that it's only one corner of St Anne's that is six metres from the highway, the remainder is further away. So my conclusion regarding massing will be that the proposal fails to meet the requirements of HDPF policy 33.3 in line with the objections from the Parish Council and would in fact be overbearing on the street scene at that location. However, moving on, um, should the committee be minded to approve this application, I request that condition six be strengthened to reinforce the recommendation for triple glazed windows on both the southwest and northwest elevations, together with consideration of through ventilation, especially of the bedroom, given the future likelihood of warmer summers due to climate change. So in summary, due to the failure to meet policy 33.3, I am minded to support the Parish Council and vote against the application, but I look forward to hearing the comments from other members of the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Noel. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I shall uh, try to avoid repeating any of the points that my fellow councillor has made, and I don't think I will be. Um, but as, as highlighted in the officer's report, uh, this application site's been subject to three previous applications for a two-bed dwelling and then a two-bed bungalow and then a further two-bed amendment, although that was later withdrawn. These refusals were based largely on excessive mass and scale on this tiny site, which presently just contains a garage with a floor above and which currently overlooks the neighbour's gardens. There was also an appeal against a former refusal which was later dismissed, principally due to the dominance of this project over the street scene. As shown in the officer's details, this site was originally part of the garden to number five Mains Farm Road, which is on the other side of the block of houses shown on the plan that the officer displayed. And this site is steeply sloping up from Hyde Street, which wasn't quite so apparent from the photos provided. But uh, it makes the present garage very difficult to approach because of the slope. The grounds for these previous refusals, I feel, have not been entirely addressed in this application, despite the officer's recommendations. And in particular, those items on page 36 of the report, which states that the previous proposals would represent an unduly cramped and unsympathetic form of development, which would be harmfully out of keeping with the prevailing character of the locality. I appreciate a new scheme is being put forward, but I can't see that the proposal in front of us today has significantly been altered so the officer's opinion could be substantially changed. Furthermore, the inspector on the appeal uh, of the previous application felt that um, this would result in a cramped form of development, also highlighted at uh, 1.8 in his report on page 36. But whilst the ridge height has been changed, I cannot see that the width of the previous application, DC 20.0472, when viewed as a front elevation, has changed very much at all. Admittedly, the depth has been reduced, but that makes no difference to the perceived mass when viewed from the street. The proposal in front of us today has pushed this front elevation back to match the prevailing building line. But that has also resulted 
in the buildings still occupying most of the site in question. This in turn means that policy 33 section 3 of the HDPF has been infringed. The building has now been pushed back into the existing garage on the site, leaving no space on one side as the side of the building is just about pressed up against the electrical substation um, and it would appear to only leave about a meter on the other side, which does not comply with the wording of policy 33 relating sympathetically with the built surroundings. In my opinion, this proposal, although now as small as it possibly could be, is still too large to fit on a site that was originally just for a garage with storage above. Finally, uh, despite Mr Humphrey's assurances that West Sussex County Council do not intend to put a footpath along uh, High Street, uh, and as well as the officer's contention that uh, this won't be happening in the near future, I do have concerns about the road verge uh, that was previously referred to in the Upper Beading Parish report that we just heard. Um, in line with uh, what we should be doing, and I know it's difficult at the moment, I did visit the site yesterday, and the owner still has a close boarded fence as shown in the photos on the edge of his curtilage, which is less than a meter from the road. And as pointed out previously, this is a busy road that requires a footpath as requested by the parish council for pedestrian safety, particularly in view of other developments currently proposed on the Henfield Road which is just a few metres away. And this is where the proposed footpath would lead to. Whilst this fence is within the proposed site's area, if it's allowed, West Sussex County Council will require at least 2.4 metres to construct the, the proposed footpath, as they will have precedence over the owner's curtilage in this respect. And this will further reduce the plot size and make any landscaping to the side of the building impossible. All that will be left at the front of the house will be a very cramped parking space with just enough room, as you can see on the plans, to fit the required two cars. But these cars could not manoeuvre on the site and would therefore either have to reverse out or reverse into or from High Street, which will be onto a blind bend where previous accidents have already been reported. On my visit yesterday, it looked as if the owner had been pushing earth around on the site to prepare for new levels of the proposed house, but it still remains a bank up the garage and is still an incredibly small site um, and, and, and just not capable of supporting the house. Could you um, start closing, please? Uh, yes, I will wait to see what other members have to say. Um, but if this application is voted by members for approval, it will be for an, an appropriate, inappropriate house on an inappropriate site. And I personally don't think I'm going to find any reason to follow the officer's recommendation for approval. Thank you. Can Councillor Vickers. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, quite clearly, the parish council and the local members think this site is unsuitable and it's cramped. So could I just have another look at the site layout and the elevations, please, so that I can see really if it really is cramped. We're just going to bring that up now, Councillor. Thank you. And can you just clarify where the existing building is in relation to the uh, um, the, the, the orange part of the uh, site? It's the hatched bit, yes? Yes, that's correct, Councillor. Yes, it is denoted by, um, uh, it is contained with what would be three retaining walls to the uh, north of the northernmost corner of the dwelling. There is a hatching which denotes um, the extent of uh, the garage in that position. And have you got the elevations there as well, please?
Well, my, my only comment, Chairman, if I may, is that um, what is there currently is not aesthetically um, attractive, and I think this building is more attractive, so I cannot see any reason to refuse it. I have sympathy with the, uh, the local members and the parish council, but on balance, I think the benefits of this single um, bedroom dwelling is, um, is welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'll call now on the Vice Chairman of Planning South, Councillor Lloyd, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I was, I have to confess, uh, minded to, um, to go along with the, uh, with the officer's recommendation, but um, having listened to the two local members, I, I'm now not so sure. And I just wondered whether the officers could now respond to particularly the comments made by Councillor Noel. Uh, which were very significant, wrapped around the, really about the overdevelopment of the site. Because um, so I agree with Councillor Vickers that the existing building is, is, uh, is really quite a horror, and the new building is certainly a major improvement on that. Um, and I personally can't see why it would dominate the site. Um, but uh, having listened to Councillor Noel, I'm now not so sure. So I just wonder whether the of officers could respond to his comments uh, before we make a decision. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, yes, certainly. Um, I'm currently sharing an image of the previous, um, of a previously submitted scheme, uh, which indeed was refused and dismissed subsequently um, at appeal, um, which I think does highlight the, the significant degree of change which has occurred between uh, the pre preceding proposal on that currently before us. Um, I, 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 do con I, do, I do accept that the site is, is small um, in its dimensions. Um, however, this preceding scheme uh, was for a dwelling which, is of, was, which was of both closer proximity to Hyde Street um, and of significantly increased depth relative to the current proposal. In resolving to dismiss the preceding appeal, the inspector found that the, the resultant increase in bulk and massing which would result from a dwelling of this scale, together with the inclusion of, of roof, um, roof extensions in the form of dormer windows, which are shown on the site plan on the right, uh, would not improve improve upon the current site scenario. Um, however, I do think it's important to highlight that those comments were made in respect of the preceding proposal. Um, the current scheme before us, sorry, I'm just switching screens again, um, as you can see is for a dwelling of substantially reduced scale um, in relation to that preceding element. It does provide for a, a sense of separation to the southern boundary of the site, particularly at its westernmost extent, where it would be in most in closest proximity uh, to the public realm. Um, it would be of a substantially lesser depth in particular to the scheme which was dismissed at appeal, while the, the mission of roof extensions would, would provide for a, a clean and um, unencumbered um, structure. I, I, in my opinion, given that this is a, a one bedroom modest dwelling um, which is not significantly in excess of the of this of the footprint of the existing garage um, I do think that this is proportionate within the site um, I think in terms of the, the footpath um, I, I acknowledge the the strength of feeling in, in respect of um, that element but I, I do have to emphasize um, that whilst I am myself not disputing the likelihood of that occurring, all I am remarking is that that does not form an element of this application. Um, it could be the case that that may come forward in connection in the future, whether that's a, a community or parish led scheme or otherwise, but um, I, I do not consider that to be as integral or fatal to the, the permission to be granted. And I think I would have to highlight again that with regards to the composition, so I'm just going to find the right photo. Um, uh, the composition of the site to the south, um, which is shown on the right hand photo there, actually it does not fantastically shown, but certainly off to the right hand side of that photo, 
that that embankment is relatively well established. There are many trees. There are. It is is it would require a degree of excavation to achieve. Uh, whether that is can be achieved in an acceptable manner, I, I'm not in a position to comment. But uh, I think at this point in time, uh, I would merely invite members not to prejudice this application by virtue of um, of works which may occur in the future. I, I, I don't have any further comments to add in response at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vickers. Chairman, sorry, may I, may I just come yes, back? Yes, come back. Sorry, uh, just, just quickly. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that response. Um, that's cleared up a few things. Um, the other thing I was going to ask was that under uh, recommendation five, the pre-commencement um, slab level condition, um, there has been a comment made at 6.13 that the schedule would be the would be the uh, let's say the uh, point at which we could possibly uh, look at um, use using facing brick uh, rather than the render. Is that something that that could be considered for sure? Yeah. Certainly, Councillor. Um, but pre-commencement condition three um, would allow for the submission of a schedule of materials, finishes and colours to the external walls, windows and roofs of the approved dwelling. Um, and that is provided that condition exists notwithstanding the submission of uh, or of an existing or indicated use of materials. So, yes, um, that, that condition would provide us with sufficient flexibility to secure the use of facing brick um, if necessary. Right, Councillor Vickers. Um, Chairman, can I just ask a question of the officers? Yes, of course. Um, could um, condition three be um, including local members in consultation on the materials? And could condition six, if we were minded to approve, be tightened up in accordance with what Councillor Croker said about the glazing? Um, if those two things could be included, then I'd be supporting the recommendation. Thank you. Would officers care to comment further? Uh, yes, that certainly can be achieved. Just to clarify, um, with regard to the works of sound attenuation, I'm reading that in respect of condition five. Um, condition six concerns the provision of parking and access facilities. Um, is that correct, Councillor Vickers? Yeah, condition five, but if the um, materials could be in consultation with the local members, would that be possible? Yep, um, that's, that, that, that is most certainly achievable, yes. Is, is that strengthening to condition six, uh, what Councillor Croker, what you wanted? Um, uh, I'm just trying to check, Chair. Um, as I read the pack that I've got, um, six concerns pre-commencement slab level condition. Um, and then goes on to talk about noise. Um, so I'm not quite sure. Condition five well, which, uh, talks about which, materials. Um, so my, my comment was about condition six. Yeah, that's what and I said. Is, is that about noise you're referring to? Yeah. It is indeed noise, but it's the associated ventilation chair, because if you, if you have triple gaze windows, and in this particular case, the advice is not to have them openable, uh, then you need to provide and, and they're not openable because the noise outside would be intrusive if they were opened. You then need some form of ventilation scheme. Uh, I was trying to get that built in because um, anybody that's uh, slept or tried to sleep in a, a roof with those sort of sloping sides, uh, steeply sloping slides, well, no, they get quite warm in the summer. That was where I was trying to go to. Thank you. And if I may dive in here chair yes we can certainly yep. add reference to suitable ventilation as part of that condition okay so are we therefore going for approval by uh, delegation with the, the officers and local members is that necessary chairman can i just suggest we go for approval subject to those increased conditions please okay anybody unhappy with that Nobody's unhappy with that. We will now go to Democratic Services to take the votes, vote, as suggested by Clear uh, Councillor Vickers. Right, so um, uh, this is to grant permission um, with the conditions as reported, with, um, uh, with condition, the condition uh, regarding external materials to be in consultation with local members and the condition six regarding um, strength, uh, 
regarding glazing and an appropriate um, ventilation scheme. I think, was that also in, in consultation with local members, the second one? So there's two in consultation, right. Councillor Blackall. Four. Councillor Brown. Four. Councillor Chowan. Four. Councillor Circus. Abstain. Councillor Clark. Four. Councillor Croker. Against. Councillor Dorr. Four. Councillor Donnelly. Four. Councillor Jupp. Against. Councillor Kitchen. Four. Councillor Lambert. Four. Councillor Lloyd. Four. Councillor Noel. Against. Councillor Platt. Against. Councillor Pott. Four. Councillor Rowbottom. Unfortunately, I had to take a call, so I must abstain. Thank you. Councillor Saheed. Against. Councillor Sanson. Four. Councillor Van der Kloot. Against. Councillor Vickers. Four. So that's 12 for, six against, and two abstentions. So the motion is carried. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to agenda item seven, which is demolition of existing residential dwelling, etc. Green Acres Farm, Washington Road. Recommendation is to approve. Could officers lead, please? Thank you, Chair. I am just bringing up my presentation. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, so this application um, concerns a replacement dwelling um, at Green Acres Farm, Washington Road, Storrington. Uh, to give a bit of background, um, the site is located to the south of Washington Road within the National Park to the east of the built up area of Storrington, which is shown so on the left hand side. The left hand side map um, on this slide. Um, the site is clustered with existing residential developments to the south of Washington Road, benefiting from a shared access with these facilities, which comprise of a number of existing dwellings, as indicated on the plan on the right. The proposal seeks the demolition of an existing dwelling together with, the together with several additional buildings, which are indicated or annotated on the right, um, and the provision of a single replacement dwelling, which would be positioned towards the southwestern extent extent of the site. The existing dwelling um, is of a modest flat roofed composition comprising of a combined bedroom living area and kitchenette with separate bathroom facilities. Um, this, this dwelling is of a mid to late 20th century character um, and does not benefit from any dedicated uh, amenity, uh, external amenity space. Uh, in terms of other development on the site, which is contained at the southwestern ex well, southern extent along the western boundary. Uh, the site contains several varying types and scales of structure. Um, these are in predominantly form in, in different forms of storage or workshop use or function ancillary to the broader use of uh, the site for domestic purposes. These structures are contained by fencing um, at, the, at their western extent and by an earthen extent, or, sorry, by an earthen bund at their eastern extent. The proposal uh, seeks to replace or, or seeks demolition of various workshop and storage buildings together with the existing dwelling um, and the provision of a single three bedroom single story dwelling. Uh, the submitted plans demonstrate that existing, existing facilities would be removed with land restored to a natural state either to serve a biodiversity benefit or to serve as a, an amenity space for the proposed dwelling. The proposed dwelling itself um, is a medium sized dwelling uh, constituting a three bedroom unit with a detached carport for parking and storage use. Uh, for the purposes of policy SD27, this marginally, sorry, at the purposes of policy SD30 and policies SD27 of the South Downs plan, uh, this marginally exceeds uh, the definition of a small dwelling within policy. The proposed dwelling is of a contemporary style, but one which is of a simple utilitarian character. This would bear some relation to the, the utilitarian character of existing st storage and workshop buildings present on the site, but would also reflect the style and contemporary character of other dwellings recently constructed in the vicinity. 
the proposed dwelling would feature a limited amount of glazing, which would not be considered to adversely affect upon the, the intrinsic quality of the International Dark Skies Reserve, um, while the, the dwelling is further indicated to achieve high standards of thermal efficiency, with further details to be attained in that regard by means of the recommended conditions. In terms of the immediate site surroundings, uh, poppies and ivy cottage are indicated on the side. These are both recently constructed dwellings, uh, which in my opinion are of a, a similar character and style um, to the dwelling now before us, making use of a similar material palette um, and form. Overall, it is considered that the proposal would not result in the loss of a small and medium sized dwelling, uh, which South Downs policy seeks to preserve, with the proposal seem to provide seemed to, with the proposed dwelling seemed to, deemed of an acceptable standard of design, which would sympathetically relate to its sound, with no broader adverse landscape landscape impact considered. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. We'll now go to the public speakers. And we will start with Charles Malloy, architect, two minutes by video. Hello, my name is Charles Malloy from Malloy Architects. I'm sorry I could not be talking to you live today. We commenced designs in early summer 2020 after a number of houses have been realized at Green Acres but there remained a number of structures and sheds on the site. This application seeks to relocate the existing residential use of Green Acres Lodge, which does not represent what could be termed as a sustainable form of construction and is substandard in many respects. The approach to the design is to replace the existing structures with a new high quality residential dwelling. The proposed design utilizes the existing site constraints to ensure there are no negative impacts within the wider context of the South Downs National Park. The dwelling will be highly sustainable. The walls, floor and roof are designed to be highly insulated and airtight to minimise heat loss. Any heating that is needed can be provided via an air source heat pump to ensure primary energy demands are significantly lower than a conventional dwelling. Glazing to the north has been minimised to reduce heat loss and the desire to include a large picture window of glass to the south has been resisted so as to avoid conflict with the dark skies policy. The form of the dwelling resonates with an agricultural vernacular and uses natural materials which will allow the dwelling to weather and recede further into the site. The proposals will also result in, in a significant 27% reduction in built form over the wider site. In the context of the boundary, boundary location and the wider South Downs National Park, the existing site layout is untidy and the proposals represent an excellent opportunity to not only significantly enhance the site and existing residential use, but also act as a positive full stop to development at Green Acres Farm. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. We'll now hear from Peter Young, the agent for two minutes by Zoom. Thank you, Chair. Afternoon, councillors. Uh, this application is submitted after some five months of preparatory work to ensure the design, layout and sustainability of the scheme would be appropriately high quality for the National Park. The location and screening was previously found acceptable for a new house by an inspector who confirmed the site is discreetly located and would not detract from the National Park. Whilst that appeal was dismissed, your council have since confirmed the existence of another residential unit at the site. This is the fundamental difference with the previous application, which was a new build house in the countryside. The current scheme is for a replacement house, something supported by the local plan. The scheme now has a policy compliant basis. The dwelling would be relocated to the south of the site onto previously developed land. A number of large outbuildings will be demolished along with the existing dwelling. Overall, there will be a net reduction in built floor space and extent of hard surfacing. As you've heard from the architect, the dwelling would be highly sustainable, energy, energy efficient and designed to nestle discreetly on the site. The appearance in our view is a significant enhancement in comparison to the current dwelling and lower quality outbuildings. The applicants have historically undertaken extensive landscaping and wildflower planting on the site, and this has notably improved the ecological value of the land. The scheme will deliver yet more greening to the site to ensure it remains rural in character and ecologically diverse. National guidance encourages us to deliver, deliver high quality and sustainable dwellings, something we believe this scheme strongly delivers. The new dwelling will be a full stop to the site and appropriately round off this small enclave of residential uses. 
the applicant welcomes and endorses your officer's detailed and balanced report and hopes that councillors will support the proposal. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. The final speaker is Councillor Alan Head from Storrington and Sullington PC, who's objecting, will speak for five minutes on Zoom. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. I had difficulty unmuting myself. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon, members and officers. Uh, the application site is outside the built-up area boundary and in the South Downs National Park. We note that despite an inspectorate appeal in 2018, considering the site unsustainable for residential development, the Council issued a lawful development certificate. We might question the morale for that, but we have to accept that it's been granted. That said, this application seeks to replace an unattractive building with another equally unattractive building, which the officer considers, quote, of an acceptable design and scale. We question the design, which we do not consider complies with policy 14 of the neighborhood plan, which states that the scale, density, massing, height, landscape design, layout and materials of all development proposals, including alterations to existing buildings, will be required to reflect the architectural and historic character and scale of the surrounding buildings and landscape. We do not consider that this design accords with that policy and the fact that it may not be visible from the road uh, does not mean that the policy should be ignored. We prefer to see a more traditional rural construction. The fact that there are other buildings which may be of a contemporary design or temporary, contemporary nature is not a reason to compound the problem with another building of the same type. We note that the new property is not in the same location as the old one, so question therefore how the certificate of lawful development can be taken as transferred to the new property. This is not a like-for-like -like replacement, but a new building in a different location. The size of the new property, uh, the, new, the replacement building, is an increase of four or five times over the original residential property, uh, significantly above the 30% of the guide, SD30 guidance. So again, we question why. Is, is the fact that the existing property described as diminutive uh, any reason to allow such a significant increase in size? Policy SD30 doesn't in fact offer any different percentages for different size buildings. The applicant states that all existing buildings which are currently used for storage, workshop facilities and the like for, for, for the management of Green Acres Farm and the domestic properties, those buildings would be removed. I, I, I imagine we'd all be pleased with that. But, but what in fact then is going to happen with the management of the site and the farm? Where are these, these facilities going to be? Or will there be further applications on this site for additional outbuildings? This would obviously then not result in the, the reduction of these buildings that's claimed within the application. To summarise, although the principle of a replacement building seems to be established, we question the size of the increase, the design and the possible lack of storage currently deemed necessary. We ask for refusal of the application, but should it be permitted, we would ask for a condition prohibiting further development on this site. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Do officers wish to comment at the stage briefly? Yes, thank you very much, Chair. Um, again, a, number, a, few, um, a few matters raised uh, by the Parish Council, which I would like to respond to. Um, firstly, um, it, it is true that a, a, a appeal was previously dismissed uh, a year or so ago on the site. Um, however, I do have to emphasise um, that that's, that respective development uh, was an application for a new dwelling, um, not the replacement dwelling currently before us. Policy SD30 of the, of the local plan does indeed 
establish an in principle policy basis under which replacement dwellings can be supported beyond defined settlement boundaries. Um, and that is reflected within the recommendation that I have made. The grant of a previous certificate of, of lawfulness does constitute a significant change in circumstance since the preceding uh, determination. And I do think that members will have to accept that this will not result in further conflict with the policies of the development plan in terms of market housing beyond the built up area, given that this is a one for one replacement. In terms of the scale of increase of the dwelling, um, as acknowledged within the report, there is a substantial percentage increase uh, relative to um, the existing residential unit. Though I would comment that, that that percentage increase is largely a consequence of the inadequacy of the existing residential unit. This It is a very modest, well, uh, incredibly modest single bedroom dwelling which comprises of of combined <laughs> kitchen living and bedroom facilities which is well below nationally described space standards for a, a new dwelling um, more significantly however I, I would do have to draw a reference to the published technical advice note in respect of policy sd30 which does highlight that the terms small and medium dwellings within policy sd30 are not to be read mutually exclusively the as reflected under policy SD27 of the local plan, there is a significant and uh, there is a significant need for both small and medium dwellings within the National Park and is reflected within the high percentage of, uh, of, of um, market two bed and three bed dwellings as reflected within, um, as would be expected for, for major developments as highlighted under SD27. Um, in, in that regard, uh, the proposed dwelling is of a scale which marginally exceeds the definition of a small dwelling within the SDLP, however not significantly so, and is otherwise compliant with the definition of a, of a medium-sized dwelling, um, as otherwise defined within the technical <laughs> advice note. In that regard, any degree of conflict with with SD30 in terms of performance against the floor space increase threshold would be would be technicalistic and would not be contrary to the purposes of that policy as explicitly highlighted within the technical advice note. I don't consider therefore that the replacement of a, a substandard unit and its replacement with a, a dwelling of sustainable and acceptable design as in this instance would prove contrary to any of the provisions or well, would, would, would prove acceptable in, in principle. Um, in terms of the design of the unit, I do acknowledge the uh, of the parish council in terms of uh, potentially a, a more pastiche approach to design. Um, however, I do have to highlight that th this would reinforce the pattern of contemporary development, which has already taken in the immediate vicinity with the proposals already representing a, a significant consolidation in existing built form. There are merits to be had therefore beyond the design of the dwelling itself, which is on balance by officers deemed to be acceptable. Um, I have nothing further to add. Thank you, councillors. Thank you very much. I'll now go to the local ward uh, members. Uh, Leader of the council, Councillor Dorr. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I think I'd refer members, first of all, to point 7.15 in the report. <coughs> I'll read it for the sake of people who haven't in front of them. As noted by the inspector, subsequent to reference SDNP 1806445, FUL, which is in 2019, at paragraphs 13 to 15, a dwelling of similar proportions and siting that now proposed was not considered detrimental to the local landscape, character, or the visual amenity of the public realm. In inclusion, the inspector noted the well-established boundaries to Green Acres Farm, which provide for a sense of detachment from the surrounding countryside and the absence of public views, <coughs> given the degree of removal from Washington Road. It goes on, it is not considered that the proposed dwelling, will prove, well, in this case, that's not what the inspector said, but now, it is not considered that the proposed dwelling will prove visible within public views or detrimentally influence the setting of surrounding landscape by virtue of its single story height and boundary treatments already present to the perimeter of Green Acres Farm. The removal of a series of outbuildings and associated hard stand present to the western extent of the farm would reduce a sense of sprawl within Green Acres Farm and is deemed beneficial to the visual amenities of Green Acres Farm and on approach to the proposed dwelling. And finally, in the 7.17 at the end, 
the proposal would, that would represent a net reduction in build form present in Greenacres Farm and would address a sense of sprawl currently appreciable along its western boundary. It is considered, therefore, the proposal will comply with policies SD4 and SD5 of the SDLP, in addition to policy 14. Um, I can only endorse those remarks. Um, I think also, I, I, I note the Parish Council's comment that buildings should conform to the architectural and historical setting, which seems rather odd to apply that to this particular setting, um, particularly given uh, what members have seen, the rather, um, shall I say, unattractive nature of what's there. Um, I think in addition, we need to be aware that there are good conditions, as far as I can see, about trees, um, pre-occupation condition number four, um, the property is low light, it's an ego property, um, and it's not detrimental to neighbours and it's single storey. Um, so in my view, this is not, and it's not an extra house, this is a replacement house getting rid of some rather untidy farm buildings. So I regard this as an enhancement and a tidying up of the present structure, and I would support the application. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Leader. I'll now go to the second uh, ward member. The third one is apologies. Uh, I therefore go to the Chairman of Licensing, Councillor Sanson, please. Thank you, Chairman. Rather than rather than repeat everything my Councillor Ray Daw has mentioned, uh, paragraphs 710 and 717 reflect my thinking on this application. Therefore, I have no hesitation in supporting the officer's recommendation together with the list of recommendations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do any other ward members wish to speak? No other ward members wish to, or no yeah. other, sorry, no other members wish to speak. Yes, I do. Sorry, Jack Sahid. Yes. Um, I'm a little bit concerned being an ardent member of the, of, of the, um, the South Downs National Park. We are demolishing some buildings and we are not replacing the new building where these other buildings are, are, are being demolished. What is going to happen to the space, um, you know, left after these buildings are demolished? Um, you know, over the years, people have been trying to build and build and build everywhere. And I'm just concerned that this may come up in, 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 in within a few years for building to be um, to, to, to replace the, those old buildings that were demolished. I don't know if we can put um, a caveat on it to, um, to, to cover that. You see, nobody has mentioned the fact that um, the, the old building site is not being used. And I'm a bit concerned what could happen in the future. Thank, Thank you. you. Officer Holbrook, mute, mute. Apologies, Chair. Um, thank you. Um, yes, thank you, Councillor. Um, I would just like to highlight um, perhaps something on my presentation, if I might, uh, to clarify um, the position of the proposed dwelling itself, um, as indicated on the plan before us, um, is actually in replacement of the vast majority of, of built facilities. Um, if it is of assistance to, to Councillor Saheed, um, that this in accordance with landscape details, which would be secured um, under the recommended conditions, we would be provided with, with certainty as to the nature of restoration of land. Um, Furthermore, condition 11, um, which concerns uh, the demolition of the existing dwelling as such, which if I scroll back quickly on my report, um, is actually located at the to the, the north east, um, as annotated on that plan. Um, would the land would be restored in, a, in accordance with that condition and there is the opportunity to rephrase that condition to require the submission of details um, as to the restoration of that land following restoration um, following demolition if if required um, though i perhaps would suggest that that likely would be con 
included within condition four, um, the landscaping details, which we are currently requesting. But if members were inclined, that is an option open to them. Um, in respect of the, the status of facilities or potential risk of further development on the site, um, I would advise that many of these buildings remain as an artifact um, of a preceding holiday let use, which was relatively extensive at this site. Not all of these facilities are currently required. Some are redundant, some are disused at present. Um, and the applicant has further confirmed to me that it is their intention um, that well, they have clarified that many of these facilities would become redundant on their on their imminent retirement. Um, on that basis, the, these buildings aren't in commercial use. They aren't in active agricultural use as such. Um, so it wouldn't be that there would be a displaced need for commercial facilities as such. Um, the possibility of a, of a further further development on the site is, is partly controlled by the recommended conditions. Um, indeed, in, in terms of the limitations on the implementation of permitted development rights, um, and if a, an application were to be received for domestic outbuildings or any other form of development in the future, um, that would have to be considered on its own merits. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Last speaker from the floor, Councillor Noel. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I think my query has been adequately answered by Officer Holbrook's comment to Councillor Sahid's question. I just wanted to uh, confirm, though, following the uh, Parish Council's comment that Greenacres Farm was a working farm and where the building is going to go, I would assume that it's not actually a working farm and these buildings, once demolished, will not need to be replaced anywhere else. Is that correct? Councillor Holbrook? Uh, yes, yes, Councillor Noel, that, that, that is correct, yes. Um, there certainly isn't a commercial agricultural enterprise operated from the site. Um, there, is, there is some um, equipment which is incidental to the management of land, but um, the applicant has confirmed that the proposed garage facilities would suffice um, for that reason. So, um, no, I'm not anticipating a, a need for, for displaced development as such. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Unless officers have anything further to say, officers have nothing further to say, may we now go to the vote, Democratic Services. Thank you. Right, so this is um, with, with the recommendation to grant subject to conditions as printed in the report. Councillor Blackwall. Four. Councillor Brown. Four. Councillor Chowan. Four. Councillor Circus. Four. Councillor Clark. Four. Councillor Croker. Four. Councillor Dorr. Four. Councillor Donnelly. Four. Councillor Jupp. Four. Councillor Kitchen. Four. Councillor Lambert. Four. Councillor Lloyd. Four. Councillor Noel. Four. Councillor Platt. Four. Councillor Potts. Four. Councillor Rowbottom. Four. Councillor Sahid. Four. Councillor Sanson. Four. Councillor Vanderclute. Four. Councillor Vickers. Four. That's unanimous. Um, it's passed. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now take a short break till, say, 27 minutes past when we'll start on the dot. <laughs> Apologies, I'll be leaving.
Right. We all back. Right, we'll now resume the meeting and we'll now move on to agenda item eight, uh, which is construction of a detached single story dwelling and garage, Badgers Nook, Melton Avenue, Storrington, West Sussex. And I did query this Badgers Nook, which is not the name you see in the map, but apparently the map is a tad out of date and the name was changed. The recommendation is to approve with the officers care to present. Yep, thank you, Chair. Uh, so this is an application that seeks full planning permission for the erection of a single story dwelling and detached garage. The site benefits from an extant planning approval under reference DC 180736, which permitted a five bed chalet bungalow on the site. Uh, the application seeks permission for an amended scheme, which has been submitted to address the location of an existing sewer and water main that passes through the site. <clears throat> the application site is located to the east of Merrifield Way and the west of Melton Avenue. The site is accessed from the east and comprises residential amenity space to the east of the host dwelling of Badger Badger's Nook, otherwise referred to as Serena on the location plan here. The application site is surrounded by detached residential dwellings, predominantly comprising chalet bungalows and two-storey dwellings. Uh, the application site is located within the built-up area boundary of Storrington and Sullington, as shown by the dashed blue line. The site comprises backland uh, a backland site located to the rear of the frontage dwellings of Melton Avenue and Merrifield Way. And given this context, the site is well enclosed and is not readily apparent from public viewpoints. The proposed dwelling would be located to the southern portion of the site and would consist of an H-shaped building comprising two main blocks and a connecting link. A proposed detached garage would be located to the north of the dwelling and would be located within the corner of the site. The proposal would incorporate an area of hard standing to the north with private amenity space located to the south. Uh, the application site is relatively modest in size, particularly when considered within the context of wider surroundings, and the proposal has therefore sought to address these constraints through a modestly proportioned dwelling that would be single storey in height and would comprise converging monopitched roofs. As shown by these elevations, the ridge line of the dwelling would extend below that of the neighbouring property, and with the proposed dwelling finished in vertical cladding and sh cedar shingles. As shown in the site section, the detached garage would be located to the northeastern corner of the site on a lower ground level than the host dwelling. The garage would incorporate a pitched roof extending in line with the ridge height of the host dwelling and would be finished in materials to match. The scale and footprint of the proposed garage was reduced during the consideration of the application in order to address concerns regarding the dominance of the building. Uh, these site photos show the current state of the site and give an indication of the boundary treatments. At the application site, oh sorry, these photos show the full context of the site, including its relationship with the nearest dwelling of Badger's Nook, right here. Uh, the application site is located within the built up area of Storrington and Sullington, where the principle of infill development is considered acceptable. The site benefits from an extant planning permission for a five bed chalet bungalow, with this amended scheme seeking to address build constraints. The single story nature and modest proportions of the dwelling have sought to better reflect the site constraints with the proposal considered to result in a better quality of development for future and neighbouring occupiers. While recognised that the proposal would utilise a contemporary design and form that would be unreflective of the wider surroundings, the development would not be overtly visible from the street scene nor readily apparent from wider public view. As such, it is not considered that the proposal would result in visual harm to the character and amenity of the street scene. It is recognised that the contemporary design would result in some conflict with the design policy of the neighbourhood plan, but the public benefit and better quality of development would outweigh this limited harm. The proposal would not result in harm to the amenities of neighbouring properties with a sufficient amount of off-road parking provided. The proposal is therefore recommended for approval subject to the conditions as listed in se section seven of the accompanying committee report. Thank you. Thank you, Officer Dale. We'll now move to the public speakers. Uh, the first speaker is Mandy Newnham, who is the applicant, who has two minutes to speak on Zoom. You're still... That's Hi. it. Hello, everyone. I'm Mandy Newnham, and along with my husband, Martin, we're hoping to build a single-storey home 
on the plot currently known as Badger's Nook in Melton Avenue. Recently retired, we're looking forward to living in the community of Storrington. Our potential neighbours have been welcoming and supportive of the proposed house design. Two have written letters of support to Horsham District Council. We asked the village firm of architects to design a home that would sit sympathetically within its surroundings, a large garden unkept in recent years. The parish council objections have been noted and taken on board. Point A, the garage is now smaller and single storey backing onto neighbour Stonehurst garage with a low impact design. It will house a small collection of classic cars. As usual, at least one of our cars will be part of the Sad Case Village show later this summer. Uh, Sad Case standing for Storrington and District Sports Car Enthusiasts. Point B. Our proposed home is no closer to Serena than the previously approved house design and lower in height. Point C. Admittedly, timber cladding and a sedum roof aren't the norm for the area, but with good reason. We want our home to acknowledge its surroundings and sit quietly in the landscape, largely hidden from public view. A professional landscape garden designer is planning the garden surrounding the house, incorporating a wildlife pond along with considered replanting to attract insects and wildlife. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. We will now have... Councillor Alan Head, Storrington Sunton Parish Councillor, who's objecting and has five minutes by Zoom. You're muted, Councillor. You're unmuted. You. Yes, I'm okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, the principal development of this site isn't disputed. The outline planning permission has already been granted and the parish council did not object. Um, however, again, as, as with the previous uh, uh, comments that I had made on the previous uh, application, the property now proposed does not comply with, pop with policy 14 of the May neighbourhood plan. I'm not going to go through all the, uh, the words that were in there. It, it, it just doesn't. And the policy also makes no mention of whether or not a property is deemed visible. Uh, I would also point out that policy three of the HTPF requires any infilling and redevelopment to maintain the characteristics and function of settlements. The property does not reflect the architectural and historic character and scale of surrounding buildings or maintain the characteristics of the settlement. Even the officer states that it would be unreflective of the surrounding vernacular. We dispute the statement that not be overtly visible from the street scene. It is actually, it will be visible partly from uh, Fryan Road. I had a look this morning. Um, the site, that's because the site slopes away from Fryan Road and the road is higher. The proposed garage is still of a size and scale to, represent, to, to suggest a secondary property and could easily be converted to such subject to permission at a later stage it is sufficiently separated from the main house to make this easily possible. Um, we would request a more traditional design, but should this application be permitted, we would ask for a condition preventing further subdivision of the site. I, I believe it's already been subdivided once. And that's me. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, do officers wish to comment at this stage briefly? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think in terms of uh, the design, it, we do acknowledge that the design is different to the vernacular surrounding, but uh, as shown in the PowerPoint presentation, it, it would not be overtly visible. Uh, and in terms of our design thrust, there is no reason for uh, a contemporary de design to not be supported. Uh, this is a relatively modest scheme. It is seeking to address the site constraints, um, being the sort of proximity to the, the nearby properties. And in that regard, it's considered appropriate. Uh, we, we could look at putting a condition in place in terms of reviewing potential uh, materials. Now, we do need to note that the proposal does seek, uh, well, a contemporary design and whether or not that would impact upon the overall scheme as a whole, but we could look to uh, request an approval of materials condition and that could well be uh, with uh, comments from local members as well. 
uh, in relation to uh, further severance, uh, any subdivision would require a, a separate planning application, but I, we could look at putting a condition on that ensures that the garage remains ancillary to the main dwelling, uh, and that could come forward as part of a regulatory condition. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now go to the ward members and we'll start with leader of the council, Councillor Dorr, please. Thank you, Chairman. Well, I think this all hinges on whether you like a modern building or you don't like a modern building. I think it's unfortunate that we ask parish councils to produce neighbourhood plans. And in this occasion, the, the point about the architectural and historical setting being taken into account. And then when it comes to something like this, we completely ignore it. Um, and I think it's rather unfortunate that that, that is happening. I, I'm sure it's a very nice house. I'm sure it's very practical inside, but that to me is quite a fundamental point. But why do we ask neighborhood, um, have neighborhood plans that make that point and then completely ignore them? Given that this is not as the previous one was in an isolated situation, but amongst other houses. So I think it's, it's rather unfortunate that we rather gloss over this. And I'm not sure how I, how it, in terms of voting that I'm 100% happy to support something which goes directly against all the work that's gone into a neighborhood plan. Having said that, and perhaps officers can conf confirm, at 3.6, it said two letters of support were received. Were there any um, objections received at all from the public? I, I, I'd like that question up, please, Chairman. Um, beyond that, I think the comment that was made by the parish council that should this be approved, it does need some um, limitation on the ability of the garage to become a separate dwelling unit. Um, beyond that, really, Chairman, I've got no comments. So if someone could just answer on that point about any objections, I can't see any on the report unless I'm not reading it properly. Thank you. Officer Dale. Uh, yes, thank you, Councillor. Um, there were no uh, objections received, just the objection from the, the Parish Council, which is summarised within the report, uh, and the two letters of support were received. Um, I would also just go back to your comments in terms of the, the character of the area. Um, the, this, the character of this area is mixed. There's an eclectic range of, of dwellings within the area, so there really is no uniform character to draw from. Um, you know, as I say, we, we could address potential material issues uh, through a condition, uh, but in terms of the character, there is no unifying form. Thank you. I'll now go to the other ward councillor who's present today, uh, Chairman of Licensing, Councillor Sanson, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I actually like this, but they, everybody will say beauty is in the heart of the beholder. My concern is the size of that garage. It, could we have a look at the relationship of the garage to the house and the physical size of the two, please? Just having a couple of tech issues, bear with us. Um, so in relation, so the garage in relation to the neighbouring property, is that what? No, to the, to the property of the applicant. Now the garage oh. seems, on the left as I'm looking at it, um, seems um, substantial. And when you look at it from the, I'm not sure what angle I'm looking at this from, the second one, it's, it dominates from the other view, doesn't it? It's taller. So the, the garage has been subject of amendment over the course of the scheme. Uh, there were concerns raised in regard to its overall height and, and footprint, and the, the applicant did seek to address that by reducing the overall scale of it and, and the, the footprint of it. So if I just take you back to the site plan, uh, okay. it, it, what it seeks to do is it seeks to reflect um, to a degree a proportion of, of one of these sort of blocks here. Now, it is slightly larger than the blocks and that really came forward um, because of the, the suggested need for the garage in terms of the, the parking of vehicles. Um, in general, it was considered that it was, it was tucked well away. You wouldn't see it from, from the main public entrance point. So really it, it, it wasn't considered to be significantly harmful enough to, to really justify a refusal on those grounds. Grounds. Um, so again, if I take you to the elevations, it it does, you know, it, it is on lower ground. So al although it is a larger structure, it doesn't compete with the the 
the proposed dwelling in in any degree in terms of the ridge height I, i've got no um, problem with the, the three garages themselves but when you've got a flat roof on the building itself then you have a pointed roof on a garage which is higher than the original house application it doesn't it doesn't feel right um would you comment on that please um well it <laughs> The, the main dwelling isn't a flat roof. It is uh, two converging sort of mono-pitched roof elements. Okay. So yeah. the, the garage does seek to address that to a degree. Uh, you know, I guess this this elevation doesn't help in, in fully understanding the kind of compilation of, of the roof structures. Uh, again, as I say, it sits on a lower ground level in any case. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't extend beyond the, the kind of main ridge height of the proposed dwelling. It sits about in line with it. I'm happy with the, the, the house itself, but I'm not happy with that garage roof. Thank you. Yes, as Councillor Sans Sanson mentioned, it is a Th th there's three garages there, um, uh, which fits in with some of the philosophy that Scrutiny was discussing recently about off-street parking, mm -hmm. says he for a commercial break benefit. Um, and uh, also, of course, uh, if, if one is a motor enthusiastic, you, you, you probably want a biggish place. I think that was indirectly mentioned earlier. Right, let's go to the... Speakers from the floor, start with the Cabinet Member, Councillor Circus, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Uh, first of all, um, I, perhaps at some stage the officer can tell me what the difference is between visible and overtly visible. Either it's visible or it isn't. And I'm not sure visibility is altogether the, the totality of the issue, because there's also the issue of precedence. And I can imagine if we allow this today, what will happen is we'll be sitting here at some stage in the future and we will have an applicant saying, ah, but the precedent's been set. So it's not just a question of visibility. It's not uh, far be it from me to disagree with um, uh, the, the leader of the council, but I don't think it's just a question of whether you like modern designs. Personally, I don't. I think this is horrendous, but thats uh, it's not just a question of whether you like modern designs. It's a question of whether you believe a particular design is appropriate in a particular context. And that's really the issue here. Um, there may, it may well be, uh, well, it is, because <laughs> I know the area, uh, that, there's a, uh, that you might describe the design in, of, of houses in this area as eclectic. But it doesn't mean you can be eclectic, but there's a, a, a basic sympathy, if you like, uh, between the, the various types and styles of house. And that is the whole purpose of having a design policy. It is to ensure that any development is sympathetic to the context in which the building is going to be erected. If that's not the purpose of a design policy, then I'm not frankly certain why we waste any time on creating design policies. I think this is utterly out of keeping with, with its setting, utterly out of keeping. It, 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 is, it does violence to, to any design, well certainly uh, to the, the work that the parish council has done on design policy and I can see no reason why we should sanction this design this, this afternoon. As, the, as Alan Haid quite rightly says, the principle of development uh, is, is not opposed by the Parish Council, but this design is utterly inappropriate for this particular setting, and I think we should turn it down this afternoon. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Would uh, Officer Dale care to comment to Councillor Circus's position? Um, I think I'd just add that, uh, you know, it's not considered, this this proposal is not considered harmful. Now, there, you know, it, it is a different design than what, and vernacular to what is, is recognised within that area. But as I say, it's an, it's eclectic, it's, it's not uniform, and, and it does provide uh, a scope to to change things up a little bit. And in terms of the, the setting of this area, it, it, 
is set back from the main frontage dwellings. In, in that case, it isn't overtly visible from public viewpoints. It, it wouldn't have an impact on the visual amenity of the street scene, albeit that there would be glancing views on it. And it was considered on the round that the, the, the proposed scheme sought to have a better relationship with the neighbouring properties and a better uh, quality of development was arising from the consideration of the site constraints. So in in the balance of those considerations, it was deemed that while there was conflict with the neighbourhood plan and, and the design aspect of it, it wasn't considered to be significantly harmful to justify a reason for refusal. I can see Councillor Surfus is satisfied. Right, um, we have uh, two more speakers and that'll be the end of it. I saw Councillor Vickers go, ah, there she comes back in, and then Councillor. So we've got three speakers and they'll be the last remaining speakers. I'll now call on Councillor Noel. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, uh, just a quick comment. Um, I'm afraid I disagree with Councillor Circus. I, I, I think that it's quite a beautiful building and, and design has to be beauty led these days. Um, I, however, I am concerned um, about the difference in style between the garage and the building. I'm just wondering if there's any way that the garage could be made to have a sloping roof rather than a rather conventional roof on it um, to make it tie in with the, with the, with the main building. I guess it's, uh, it's really a bit late in the process to uh, be able to change the garage, but I would just like that explored, please. Okay, we'll, we'll hold that query. Oh, let's listen to Councillor Crocker, please. It's Crocker. But never mind. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, just to say I support really what Councillor Knowles said. Um, and uh, I'm afraid I totally disagree with Councillor Circus on this one. It, it is an attractive building. I think the siting of the garage uh, on a lower ground level than the main building um, lets you get away with the, the pitch roof in this case. So. I'm quite happy to go with the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Officer Dale, would you like to comment on Councillor Knowles' position? Uh, yes, thank you. So just, just regarding the uh, reform of the garage, uh, that was something that was explored as part of the amendments coming forward. But unfortunately, if it was to go through a similar reform to that shown on the dwelling, then it would amount to a much greater height than what was what is now shown. So the reason that that pitch was placed in the manner that it has was to reduce the overall height to ensure that it didn't break the, the ridge height of the of the main dwelling. So I recognise that it, it doesn't follow through in terms of the design rationale with the proposed dwelling, but it was really sought in order to overcome concerns that the garage building itself would dominate that site. That's That's pretty good. Right, um, and Councillor Vickers. Uh, not trying to prolong this any further, um, Chairman. Um, just to say that I'm usually a traditionalist and I like old fashioned things rather than modern things. But in this particular case, I think this is quite a good design. Um, but I would want to see a non-severance condition on that garage to keep it ancillary because it is a substantial building and could be possibly sold off as a separate dwelling. So. On the basis of that condition being added, I'd be happy to support the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Officer Dale, I think there was reference to a couple of conditions that members would wish to see strengthened or put into this if we are going to approve it. You got that all on board? It was materials, was it subdivision? Have we covered it all? Uh, sorry, is that a question for me? Um, yes, so it, so I got um, approval of materials condition and an ancillary accommodation non-severance condition. I think that covers all the points the members did raise. So in the circumstances, can we now go to a vote? Bear in mind the check, slight strengthening of the conditions. Could everybody make sure they're unmute, unmuted, unmuted, unmuted. Okay, so for approval, to grant approval with the two um, additional conditions which were just outlined by Tamara. Um, Councillor Blackall. For. Councillor Brown. For. I understand Councillor Chow has left the meeting now. Um, Councillor Circus. Against. Um, Councillor Clark's had to go to the same meeting, I think. Um, Councillor Croker. For. Councillor Dorr. For. 
Councillor Donnelly. Four. Councillor Jutt. Against. Councillor Kitchen. Four. Councillor Lambert. Four. Councillor Lloyd. Four. Councillor Noel. Four. Councillor Platt. Four. Councillor Pott. Four. Councillor Rowbottom. Four. Councillor Saheed. Four. Councillor Sanson. Four. Councillor Van der Kloot. Four. Councillor Vickers. Four. That's 16 in favour and two against, so the motion is carried. Thank you very much for that. We'll now move on to the last uh, application agenda item, which is number nine, direction of a two-storey detached dwelling, associated access, landscape, parking, etc. Elmfield House, Small Doll, Ward Bramber, and the recommendation is to approve. Could the officers kindly present? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. So this is an application for full planning permission for the erection of a two-storey detached dwelling and associated works. The application site is located to the south of Newhall Lane and is located within the linear residential development comprising the street. The site is located between two two-storey residential dwellings to the east and west with an eclectic mix of detached and semi-detached dwellings of both single and two-storey height within the surroundings. The application site is located within the built-up area of Small Doll, as uh, shown by the dashed blue line. The site comprises an undeveloped paddock located between existing residential dwellings. Agricultural land is located to the south of the site, along with a number of redundant and dilapidated agricultural buildings. The proposed dwelling would be sited centrally within the site and would be set back from the road frontage. The dwelling would be built slightly forward of the neighbouring dwelling to the east and slightly set back from the neighbouring dwelling to the west, creating a staggered build line. A new access is proposed to the northwestern corner of the application site with an area of hard standing to allow for off-road parking located to the frontage. The footprint and siting of the dwelling was amended during consideration of the application to better reflect the build pattern. The proposed dwelling would comprise a T-shape with pitched gable feature to the front and rear, along with a single hipped roof dorner to both elevations. The scale and massing of the dwelling was amended during consideration of the application to address concerns regarding the visual impact of the proposal on the street scene. The site photo shows the site in the context of the neighbouring properties to the east and west. Uh, these photos show the frontage of the site uh, as taken from New Hall Lane. The existing vegetation would be retained, albeit that a section would be removed to accommodate the new access. The application site is located within the built-up area of Small Doll, surrounded by residential dwellings, where the principle of infill development is acceptable. The proposed dwelling would sit appropriately within the context of the site and the immediate neighbouring properties, and would be of a scale, form and massing that relates sympathetically to the wider built form. The proposal would not result in harm to the amenities and sensitivities of neighbouring properties and would not result in material harm to the function and safety of the public highway network. The proposed development is therefore recommended for approval subject to the conditions as less listed in section 7 of the accompanying committee report. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> there are no public speakers for this application so therefore we go straight on to hearing from the ward members. Could we have Councillor Noel speak please? Thank you, Chairman. Um, this, uh, this is a bit strange because it's, it's a bit of an aberration of, of parish and ward boundaries. It's actually, um, it's, uh, it's in Henfield Parish, but actually in, in, in our ward. So um, it's, it's, it's a strange one, New Hall Lane, but um, <clears throat> that's a respect of, of what I need to talk about. I also visited this plot um, I walked down, I walked down um, New Hall Lane and I noted that all the buildings down there are of different sizes, um, the plots are of different sizes and there's no um, uh, regular distance from the road to the buildings. So there's a varied selection of buildings down there. However, this one I noted, uh, although it's in line with the, with, with, with the houses either side of it, it does go almost to the boundaries on either side. I know it has been <coughs> reduced already um, after consultation with the officer, um, but it's, it, it's still very large. Now, I, I would say 
from judging the other houses, it's probably going to be one of the largest, if not the largest house down New Hall, down New Hall Lane. Um, so I, I just wanted some reassurance that it's it's not going to be overbearing from the officer, and I and I hope I hope that she's had a chance to com compare it to to other houses. Um, my other concern is that um, <clears throat> there's a, another application for the same site, which is at the back of the house, um, and that is DC twenty two three two seven, which is for restoration bar. Uh, restoration works to a barn which is at the back of the uh, plot and it's um, same plot same se same design same owner and if this is also approved I know this one's first but if the other one gets approved then it's going to be definitely over development on that plot so I just want again some reassurance that um, this is going to be taken into account uh, and if this uh, is approved, then we need to seriously look at the next one on the same plot. Thank you. Officer Dale. Uh, yes, thank you, Councillor. Uh, in regard to the, the footprint and scale of the proposed dwelling, uh, as I say, this was subject to consideration and amendment over the course of the application. Uh, the amendment sought to reduce the overall footprint uh, and extent of the, the proposal, so bringing it uh, further away from the shared boundaries, particularly given as Enfield House uh, is located almost immediately on the boundary to this plot. Uh, so the, the amended scheme brought forward ha had that reduction and, and the reduction in the height as well to to really address how it set, sits within the street scene. Um, there are no windows proposed to, to either side of elevation so it, it isn't considered to have an impact in terms of amenities and, and those uh, amendments really sought to address the, the kind of concerns. Now, in regard to New Hall Lane, it is eclectic. There are various sized plots and various sized dwellings within the street. Um, this one is probably sort of mid range in comparison to those. And the proposal has sought to really address that by limiting the, the built form. Um, in relation to the the application to the to the back uh, where the agricultural barn is, the that application solely relates to uh, works to that agricultural barn. There is no application mm -hmm. in place at the moment for, uh, say, a prior notification or a change of use. So, uh, in terms of that application, I, I do not think it would have an impact on on this uh, proposal at this point. Uh, any subsequent application to potentially change the use of that barn would come forward as a separate application. Thank you. Councillor uh, Croker. Thank you, Chair. Um, just picking up on a point the officer made there, um, looking at the plans that I'm looking at, there is a window on the first floor on the west side elevation. Anyway, um, uh, my comments are based on a couple of site visits uh, taken as part of regular exercise, um, including one where I experienced firsthand the regular flooding that occurs in this lane. Key policies here would seem to be HDPF 3, i.e. is the proposed building of appropriate nature and scale, and HDPF 33 is it is unacceptable harm to adjoining properties avoided, and does the scale, massing and appearance relate to the built surroundings? And my impression from the visits is that the proposed building would be of an excessive nature and scale, considering the built surroundings. Uh, another thing I'd like to touch on is uh, a comment made at Paris 619 of the committee report uh, regarding approved infill applications along Hall Lane. This is existing approvals. Um, and the comment being that uh, no objections were made. Um, from the people I've spoken to there, they would have objected had they known about it, but I guess that's, that's their problem. So I won't dwell on this, but I'll instead comment on the parking allowance mm. of three spaces for a dwelling with four ensuite bedrooms. Um, again, West Sussex County Council standards appear to have been met. So again, not a material consideration. But overall, I'm afraid I have to disagree with the officer's conclusion and report that I am minded to support the Parish Council and vote against this application. But obviously, we'll be interested in the views of other committee members. Thank you, Chair. Do you wish to comment, Officer Dale? Uh, yes, just to clarify, I apologise. There is uh, a first floor side window. Um, I believe that opens to, um, uh, sorry, a uh, 
a bathroom so we could look to add a condition on that requires that to be obscure glazed and non-opening uh the officer's view is that it it wouldn't result in harm to the amenities of of the neighboring properties it wouldn't result to overlooking or loss of privacy but that is something that could come forward thanks councillor croker would uh, th that reference to the window by the officer help you out yeah, it certainly would yes thank you uh, but it doesn't change my overall view in terms of massing, etc. Thank you. you. You're a hard man to please. Are there any other members from the floor who'd like to speak? There are no other members from the floor who'd like to speak. Uh, therefore, can Democratic Services kindly do take us to the vote? And I'd ask members to unmute themselves, please. So this vote is for the recommendation as printed in the officer's report, subject to the conditions as printed in the report. Councillor Blackall. For. Councillor Brown. For. Councillor Circus. For. Councillor Croker. Against. Councillor Dorr. For. Councillor Donnelly. For. Councillor Jupp. For. Councillor Kitchen. For. Councillor Lambert. For. Councillor Lloyd. For. Councillor Knoll. Abstain. Councillor Platt. Against. Councillor Potts. Against. Councillor Rowbottom. For. Councillor Saeed. Abstain. Councillor Sanson. For. Councillor Van der Kloot. Oh. Councillor Vickers. Oh. Thank you. That is 13 for, three against, and two abstentions. So the motion has been carried. Well, thank you very much. It brings us to urgent business, of which there is none. I'd just like to remind you that the officers have got another exciting planning meeting next Tuesday. So if it's not in your diary, please put it in. And I'm sure you all can't wait to do it. Thank you very much for your attendance. And thank you very much to the officers for all their help today. And good night. Go for it. Still get a bit of a walk. It's not too dark yet. Good night. Cheers. Good night. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye.